On June 4th, 2022, I published a video regarding my plan to get rich quick shorting the real estate market. I bought options on a 3x leveraged real estate inverse ETF. And the cherry on top to make it even more poetic, I did it on Robinhood. A completely degenerate type of move. But it's now been five months since then and a lot has happened. I want to get into where the real estate market is now and exactly what I did with my position. Did I sell? Did I lose money? Did I make money? There's a lot to unpack here. First off, I have a confession to make. In that last video, I said that I'm committing to not buying any real estate at least for the next six months. So at this point, I'm kind of committed to not make any real estate purchases for the next six months or so. You're a fake and a fraud. As the market started cooling down, there was a deal where I could get a property for $100,000 under its original listing price, and I could add value to it through a little remodel. I'm sorry to break the commitment, I had to tap in, but even though that's the case, my personal outlook on where the real estate market is headed has not changed. Because if you remember my last video, my big thesis and my big conviction is that we have this huge problem of inflation. The United States of America printed a ridiculous amount of money over the last few years, and well now, surprise, we have record-breaking inflation numbers. Look at us, look at us, huh? Who would've thought? Not me. And I took the stance that the US government will do anything possible, anything in their power to not make the US dollar worthless. I think they'll crash whatever markets they need to, they'll drive the country into as deep of a recession as they need to, but they won't let the US dollar fall off. USD is a currency that's used globally, and if it's suddenly becoming worthless, other countries might start trading using a different currency. And if that happens, well then the power of the US on a global scale starts to dwindle. The US would no longer have the control and the pull that they currently do, right? So how do you fight inflation? You raise interest rates, you make it more expensive to borrow money, you turn the money printer off. Burr. But if you do that, markets start crashing because now there's not all this printed money flowing into them and holding them up. And when it comes to the real estate market specifically, there's a very direct impact that higher interest rates have on home prices. If it's more expensive to borrow money, you can't afford as high of a monthly payment. 500k loan when the interest rate was about 2% is a $1,800 monthly payment. 500 thousand dollar loan today with an interest rate of close to seven percent that's a thirty four hundred dollar payment same exact house same exact price the only thing that changed is the interest rate not many people can afford this new payment so they're not gonna buy this 500k house and if no one's buying it and the seller needs to sell it well then the seller has to lower the price but to get it back to the previous eighteen hundred dollar payment where people can actually afford it with an interest rate of about seven percent the price would have to be lowered from 500 to 300 grand i'm not saying that's how steep of a decline we're gonna see but that was kind of my whole reasoning behind why I thought the market would crash. If people don't have the money to buy a house, then they can't buy it. But there's people out there who still need to sell their house. So those are the people that are going to have to take the hit and lower their prices. But now five months later, where are we today? Well, the 30 year mortgage rate has surged to over 6.8%. Last week, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates to the highest point that we have seen since 2008. And the real estate market in 2008 was not a vibe. The Federal Reserve also released new CPI inflation data, which was expected to go down to 8% year over year since it recently trended down from 9.1 to 8.5%. However, the Fed announced 8.3%, which is not the decline in inflation that everybody was hoping for and expecting. No kizzy, no trolls, no exaggeration. I paid $24 for a single Chipotle bowl the other day. I was trying out their new meat that I didn't know the price of and I got double, but still $24 Chipotle bowl. I got absolutely rinsed, but point is inflation is not as under control as we thought. And the Fed is making it clear that they're going to continue raising interest rates until the job is finished and inflation is back at a normal level. Job's not finished. Job finished? I don't think so. So then what's going to happen to real estate if interest rates keep on rising? Well, probably the same exact thing that's been happening over the last few months. Some serious cooling off. Now, real estate prices vary drastically depending on location, and some areas are going to get hit way harder than others, but some of these numbers are crazy. This is a report from Redfin here. Oakland seeing a 20% drop from February to August. Gee, easy, a 20% drop in your city? Personally, I wouldn't take that kind of disrespect. I'm from the Bay, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Seattle down 17, San Jose, Sacramento down 17, and the list just goes on. So it's happening, right? You can't really argue against this data. And given that the Fed is saying that they're gonna continue raising interest rates, I think home prices are gonna have to continue falling. Which puts home buyers in a tricky spot. The people that are really gonna win here are the ones that are buying outright in cash, because for those people, the interest rate doesn't matter. They're paying cash, they're paying in full. They're not taking out a loan, all that matters is home price. And for everyone else, maybe we can still buy 
buy during the crash when home prices are low and interest rates are high, still using a mortgage, but then pray that interest rates go back down and then you can refinance your loan. But that's not guaranteed, right? In the grand scheme of things, who knows where interest rates will go? In the 1980s, they were as high as 18%. So a 7% interest rate doesn't sound so bad when you think about that. But on the flip side of all of this, on the other side of the argument, home prices have been seeing a ridiculous rise over the last few years. So maybe we're just stabilizing and getting back to a normal level. Even right now, even with a dip that we're already seeing, home prices are still not at pre-pandemic levels that were like two years ago. But anyways, after this cool off first started happening, five months ago, I made the video where I took on a stock position that was supposed to make me money if real estate prices would fall. There's an ETF ticker DRV, which consists of large cap equities of the US real estate segment. It's a 3X leveraged ETF. And to make things even worse, again, I bought options on the stock. A ridiculous play that in retrospect, I probably should have done more research into. Quite a few of you guys pointed out that the ETF I chose holds a lot of commercial and global real estate. So it's companies that own cell phone towers, warehouses, storage units, that kind of thing. Not necessarily single family homes, right? Also, a lot of people told me why buying options on a 3X leveraged ETF might not achieve what I think it will. So it wasn't the exact thing that I was looking to short and apparently not the best way to do it. Another interesting train of thought that a few people held was that I was doing a pump and dump. The stock option profit says this video is a pump and dump. There are two real estate ETFs with much higher options volume. DRV has the lowest options volume, implying that's why I chose it so that it would be easier to pump. Well, I'll tell you that the stock options profit is a false profit. I still haven't sold my position, so you can't have a pump and dump without the dump. There was a spike sometime after the video was released, but I doubt that a 200k viewed video on YouTube is going to have that kind of effect on an ETF. But the initial pump was pretty nasty. The 10 grand that I put in turned into 20 like two weeks in. So at that point, I was over 100% in the green. But because this is kind of a troll, ridiculous type of play, I didn't sell and continued holding, which is when it took quite the dip. I think at the lowest, I ended up being like, about 50% down in the red. So from doubling my money to losing half. Do not give up. Diamond hands. I still didn't sell even though I was down a high mileage 330i. From there, the ETF kind of fell stagnant, barely going up or down. But leading up to and after this most recent Fed announcement where they announced that they're raising interest rates and that they plan on continuing to do so, our position went slightly parabolic. September 19th, I was back up in the green by about 10%. And by the end of that same week, we were at 116% in the green. Today, as I'm filming this video on September 26th, it's sitting at 178% in the green. So that 10 grand turned into 29 grand a profit of close to nineteen thousand dollars get your money i'm not your funny up if I only invested $100 million, I'd now be sitting at $290 million. At this point, I'm thinking of taking out my initial 10 grand and then letting the 18, 19 grand profit ride and see what happens with that. But for trolls, I'm probably not gonna and instead just go ahead and risk losing it all. Now, but I'm curious here, your guys' thoughts on this. Is there another side to it? Is there good reason for why real estate wouldn't crash? Am I missing something here? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed this video and have an amazing rest of your day. Peace.